Whether I'm on camera or behind the scenes, I'm always looking for the next big story. My name is Megan Horhan, and I'm a multimedia journalist. I have the skills to tell a compelling visual story through strong images, well-edited sound bites, and conversational writing. I can do all of this myself. I've covered stories from the effects of genetically modified organisms for farmers in Iowa, all the way to the Syrian conflict. I can bring you live reporting, breaking news coverage, features, and hard news. I have also produced and presented a live radio newscast. Here are a few examples of my work. Enjoy. Shelly Squire starts her day at sunrise to begin work on her 51 acres of organic farmland. GMOs are prohibited in her process of organic farming from the USDA. GMOs are potentially dangerous to the health of animals and humans. I don't think enough testing has been done to verify the safety. I also think that in the long run they're potentially more chemical dependent than organic crops. She uses a variety of other methods such as field rotation, mulching, and seed diversity and to, to compensate. According to Squire, it can be labor intensive, but it's worth it to know with confidence that our crops are safe to consume. European countries and some counties in California have banned the use of GMOs altogether. World Food Prize winner from Monsanto, Robert Fraley, said in a statement, we want anyone with an interest in nutritious, affordable, and available food to have complete, accurate information. 80% of the food made in the United States is made of genetically modified organisms, but it's not required to be labeled on our food. The opposers of GMOs push for labeling and government regulation, which would give the transparency Fraley suggests. The Farm Bill is one of President Obama's priorities before the year ends. The World Food Prize in Monsanto may just be the sprout to this conversation. This is Megan Horhan for Daily Iowan TV. A stitch of a sewing machine begins one project for Peace, Iowa. School bags, a little thing we take for granted, but for Syrian children forced to leave their homes, it could mean a lot. This volunteer-based organization plans on making at least 50 school bags to send to refugees residing in Jordan. They fill the bags with colored pencils, notebooks, and rulers to give children a distraction from what's going on around them. Well, I just think to have their own bag that they can keep their stuff in, I just think would, would mean a lot to them to have something fun to do and something where they can learn again and do what kids are supposed to be doing. Peace Iowa promotes international peace and creates awareness for future generations on how to help others around the world. Syria may seem worlds away from us here in Iowa City, but some UI students feel like we should be more concerned. Keeping informed, trying to find information and seeking it out is probably the best way to do something. We can always like raise money and like donations to people because we all, we know that there are people affected by chemical warfare. I, like we can donate money for medications to help them get better. Some students may not know what's going on in Syria, but others are paying attention. Peace Iowa provides this opportunity to learn and give back to suffering countries like Syria. This is Megan Horhan for Daily Iowa TV. AJ Nelson and Joe DeLago found a problem at large public universities and they put a pause on their own college education to try to solve that problem for other students. It, it seemed really ridiculous to us that there were 400 students in a class and one teacher and three TAs, you know, like the ratio there is like four to 400, right? It's a broken system where learning it isn't put first and foremost. The solution? Cluster flunk. Okay, so it's a type of social page. media aimed to increase learning efficiency. Students create a profile, join their courses, and are then able to connect with other students in their classes to share notes and ask questions. These big lecture halls can fill up with up to 400 students, making it intimidating to talk to people. So most students end up studying alone. I started using cluster flunk last year, and I found it to be helpful in lectures where I didn't know anyone else. You know, let's face it, you're not going to walk up and down the rows of your lecture hall and be like, hey, you know, what's your first name? Can I follow you on Twitter? You know, so we just take all of that away. Communicating with fellow classmates will soon be even easier on Cluster Flunk. Instant messaging will be their newest addition to the website. So when you're up at 2 a.m. studying for your upcoming finals, you can immediately get answers to your questions. 
This is Megan Horhan reporting for Daily Iowan TV.